But um, <clears throat> I started out my Air Force career, uh, I'll give you a little overview of it, and then we'll give you some of the intricate details. But uh, I was going to school in the uh, early 50s, and my dad got dabbling into politics, got a probate judge mad at him, and I had to enlist, even though I was in the university and uh, in the ROTC program, which meant if I graduated, I'd get a commission as a second lieutenant in the Air Force. I had to enlist to keep from going to the Army. So uh, I did that, and uh, then after I enlisted, I was fortunate to serve in my service. I served as a navigator for three and a half years, uh, then I was went to pilot training and upgraded got to, as it was a pilot and then uh, during that time the rest of my service I served in all three SAC Air Forces, 2nd Air Force, 8th Air Force and 15th Air Force in different uh, <clears throat> positions uh, from a pilot to instructor pilot to chief of standardization and then ultimately uh, the last four years I was in the service I was on 8th Air Force staff working for the Command and General 8th Air Force in uh, Southeast Asia. But uh, <clears throat> after I got out of basic training and applied and went to cadets, I got my commission as a uh, second lieutenant and wings as a navigator. I was first stationed in Savannah, Georgia, second bomb wing, second air refueling squadron. Uh, my wing commander was a uh, future Chief of Staff of the Air Force, uh, David Jones, and my squadron commander was an All-American West Point graduate, uh, Rafal a guy named Rafalco, who later on was a general officer. And we had quite a few escapades. With all that high power there, we did missions. Our squadron was uh, destined to do a lot of temporary duty. We had, uh, I don't know the code names, but we would go, for example, uh, 179 day TDY from Savannah to North Africa, and we supported B 47s coming out of Savannah and our uh, 305th bomb wing down in Tampa, Florida. They would come over, we'd refuel them just north of Lodges, and they would go in and they would do their super snoopy stuff around, ring around Russia and we would refuel them coming back out in the mouth of the Mediterranean and they'd come back to the United States and we would recover into Cities of Maine. And uh, interesting facet on that, we were, we were on alert and flying out of Cities of Maine and we had one end of the airdrome and on the other end was a squadron of um, Russian MiGs whose job was to keep us, if we went to war, they were to keep us from flying out. Uh, where, where was this, Glenn? Cities of Maine, North Africa. It's about, it's about 100 miles northeast of Casablanca. We had several operating bases in Southeast, in uh, North Africa at that time. Uh, for example, uh, we used on an emergency basis uh, uh, the, the shores of Tripoli Song with the Marines there. We had a little base in, uh, in Tripoli. But then later on, Gaddafi got in there and stopped that. But... Uh, we, we, we had quite an interesting thing. As a matter of fact, while we were down in Citus of Maine, my crew flew the uh, survey party into Madrid, Spain, and they laid out what turned out to be Torrejon Air Force Base, uh, was one of our use bases in, in Spain, just outside Madrid. And uh, that area of the world later on, we had the, uh, we were refueling B 52s on what was class called uh, chrome dome operation, whereby we, we called it ring around Russia because we, for a lot of years, had B-52s circling Russia every uh, with a decent interval between them uh, with nuclear bombs. And uh, we had a B-52 uh, pilot got a little tired, ran into the uh, rear end of a tanker and crashed and salvoed, and we had a couple of nuclear weapons down just off the coast of Spain that uh, created quite a bit of national controversy. But uh, things like that went that a very uh, isolated incident because uh, for the refueling and everything we did, uh, it was uh, overall good safe operation because well coordinated between the, the 
the crews of the different airplanes.